Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our twenty. See, I turned my notes already. Our 29th episode of Brew Talk with Mr. Beer. We're doing so many, it's so much fun. Uh, my name is Robert Lucas. I'll be your host for today's show. Uh, we appreciate you taking the time to watch before I dive into our topic. We've got two things to talk about. One, actually, let's talk about the other thing first. Uh, if you have any ideas of what you want to see for future episodes of Brew Talk with Mr. Spear, things you want us to talk about, let us know. Leave the comments. Send us an email at customer service. Uh, Ashley and Zach are on there. Chat with us on the website. If you have an idea, you're like, oh, I'd like to learn more about this, let us know. We'll do an episode about it for you. That way we can teach you a little bit. And I'm sure if you have the question, a lot of other people have the same exact question, especially as we're trying to get a lot of new brewers as we get into the holiday season. Uh, what am I drinking is our pecan porter recipe, which is phenomenal. It's been one of our better doing recipes over the last, since we released our new batch of six recipes uh, last month. It's doing super well, super great recipe. Um, I did get a brew tip from Zach saying that if, if you did want to up the, the pecan flavor in it, just add more pecans when you toast them. You put them in the hop sack anyway, so it doesn't matter. So if you want to double, triple that to get that really nutty kind of flavor out of it, go for it, do it. It's going to be super awesome, super great, but it's just a really good beer in general. I like that one a lot. It came out really well. Those six recipes we got crushed it. Might have some more recipes coming out shortly as well. Um, so today's topic shouldn't be too long with the term that's kind of thrown around a lot that a lot of people talk about, uh, especially in our Facebook group, cold crashing. Everyone talks about cold crashing their beers, doing this, doing that, all kinds of stuff. Personally, I've actually never cold crashed any beer that I've brewed. I mean, I've been working here for six, over six years now. I've brewed countless recipe recipes. Never cold crashed one doesn't mean it doesn't work. I think it does work wonders, especially for the certain type of beer you're brewing. I just, I just brew it straight up, uh, keep it original. Um, so basically cold crashing is using the cold to drop the sediment out of your beer. So if you want a clearer beer, you should cold crash your beer. So if you don't like your beer being cloudy, hazy, or get those little floaties in there, you should be cold crashing your beer. Um, if you're brewing like a lager or a pilsner, cold crashing works great for that because it really clears them out. Or if you're doing like a super hoppy IPA, like if you're dry hopping the hell out of like a hazy IPA or something like that, and then you have all that gunk kind of floating in there and all that hops because you're throwing your hops in commando, you cold crash it, it will clear that thing up pretty good. You'll still have some of that haze, but man, if you want just like that aroma, but you want that clear look to it, like we do some in the office here, especially like Matt, who does all of our graphic stuff. We were just talking about he cold crashed his hazy IPA and it's crazy what it can do for it. So I think everyone here does it in the office, except for me, so. But I don't brew it as much as everyone else does. Um, but yeah, basically make sure that all that gunk settles to, 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 to the bottom uh, of your fermenter. So in order to do this, the only thing you really need is your refrigerator. Just make sure you got enough space in there for the fermenter. And make sure it can, the shelf can hold it because they are kind of heavy. You don't want to put it in there and your shelf breaks and you lose your keg of beer because then nobody will be happy. You'll have beer all over your fridge and then you can't drink it. Um, so what you want to do is basically, once you taste your beer, your beer is done fermenting and it is ready to bottle. So you're like, I could bottle this beer now. Or you're going to put it in your fridge for 12 to 24 hours. And for the cold crash, and that's what will help clear out the beer and have all that sediment settle down to, to, to the bottom of your beer. So when you're getting ready to bottle it, you'll want to sanitize all your equipment, sanitize all your bottles, get everything ready to go like you normally would. And then once your cold crash, or, and then what, so once the cold crash is done, let me back up a second, 12 to 24 hours, once you get to that point and you're ready to bottle after the cold crash, you're going to get all your equipment ready. You're just going to pull it out of the fridge and bottle it from there. You don't want it to warm back up because you can kind of basically undo what you did for cold crashing because it starts to warm up some of that sediment might start to float around again so you definitely want it to be cold and just bottle it and then um from there what will and and then um, from there you just bottle like you normally would and can and condition and carbonate like you normally would uh what cold crashing does is that it gets that remaining yeast that is left over after fermentation to flocculate and, or in simple terms it just clumps it together so it settles to, to the bottom the cold just helps it you know, solidify together, and it falls out of suspension into the bottom of your fermenter. So it reduces you know, the amount of trub and all that gunk that you can get in your bottles when you're bottling. Um, a little separate tip, kind of just related to getting junk in your bottles, I think a lot of people do it here in the office when we brew, is you pop up the front of the, 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 the fermenter a little bit. So every once in a while, if you see like a picture of our, of our brew room or when we're doing the brewing videos, you might see some fermenters back there and they're kind of propped up a little bit. We do that because it helps all that trub settle to the back of the fermenter so it keeps your spigot super clear. So just another tip if you want to do that, you can. Um, and when you cold crash, you can even do that as well, prop up a little bit because then all that stuff will really solidify to the back of the fermenter 
and just let all that clear beer flow through your spigot. So that's really cool. Um, it'll help keep it easier in bottling. So some quick FAQs for this. Uh, you can cold crash any beer style. Does not matter if it's an ale, if you fermented a true lager, whatever it is, cold crash any beer you want to be clearer. Doesn't affect the beer at all. Uh, the cold will not kill your, your yeast. It just may, basically makes it go to sleep. So don't worry about cold crashing your beer and then killing your yeast. Then you won't get carbonation in your bottles. That won't happen because once it warms back up, that yeast will you know, kick back up again. And that's also one of the reasons why we harp on temperature so much um, in all of our instructions. And Ashley's always telling people the proper temperature range in the Facebook group because we want to make sure that you're getting the most out of your yeast and it's going to produce the best results for the beer. That's why we tell you between 70 and 72. That's where our brew room is set constantly. That's where you get the best results. That's where you should be at. We give you that range of 68 to 78. 70 to 72 is ideal. Like I said, the cold will not kill your yeast. And then cold crashing will not affect your carbonation process because you will still leave, leave your bottles at your fermentation temp temperature for carbonating. So you want to make sure that after you do the cold crash, after you bottle, you're going to take your bottles and put them back out at whatever fermentation temperature you have and let them you know, carbonate for those additional two weeks. So I was going to wrap it up today. Uh, let us know if you have any questions, comment on the post, uh, share, like, subscribe it. Let us know that, that, that you like what we're doing. Uh, I was a little all over the place today with, with, with the cold crashing, but it is an important topic, and I wanted to make sure that I got all the points that I listed out so you guys know you know how to do it and what to do, and I think some of you guys might really see some benefits if you want clearer beers and stuff like that, uh, you know, what you're doing. And like I said, if you, enjoyed, if you enjoyed the video, give us a like, share, a thumbs up, subscribe. Whatever platform you ever be watching it on, uh, we post them on our Facebook page, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and YouTube. So check it out wherever you get your uh, information about things. And also, if you have not joined, you need to join our Facebook group, Mr. Beard Brewing Society. It's a great place to hang out. There's all kinds of cool stuff. I learned a lot from seeing all the posts in there. You guys are making some amazing recipes, some awesome pictures in there. You need to join it. You can find it by going to uh, Facebook.com and searching Mr. Beer's Brewing Society in the search bar, or just go to our Facebook page, go to groups and click join. Uh, you have to answer three questions or we will not let you in. If you don't answer the three questions, we're just not gonna let you in, it's only three questions. If you are a new brewer or interested in brewing and you wanna get started with Mr. Beer, but a little curious about the process, let us know in the questions, just answer one of them and say, hey, I'm new, but I wanna learn. We'll let you in so you can learn, hopefully kick off your brewing journey with Mr. Beer. I uh, hope you guys are all having a great week. Hope you guys have a great weekend. Do some brewing, do some drinking. Cheers, guys.